This week, we get both the Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius and the new moon in Sagittarius. And what this week is about is understanding that we have to replan, reorganize, and re-strategize what our vision is and what our goal is. And when we get to the new moon in Sagittarius, what I want you to think about is whatever your target is, wherever you want to be, wherever you want to go, I need you to aim above it. Because in order to hit what you want, you got to go a little bit above it. Because if you aim for what you want, you're going to hit a little bit below it. Anyone who's ever shot bow and arrow, anyone who's ever shot any sort of rifle at a long distance knows exactly what I'm talking about. And this week, you're going to be challenged to think bigger and aim higher than what you're used to doing. So let's go ahead and get started talking about this. Welcome back to The Astrology Report, this time for November 25th through December 1st of 2024. If you don't know me already, my name is Cam White. I'm a professional astrologer. I'm an expert in the transiting astrology, and my job is to let you know what is going on in your world so you know how to use it to your advantage. And this week, we only have about three highlights, but the two big ones are Mercury stationing retrograde in Sagittarius, and we now are going to go into the goofiest Mercury retrograde of all time. And if you haven't watched my Mercury retrograde video yet, make sure you check that out as well because I go over how exactly this is going to be affecting your zodiac sign in particular. As well, we have the sun making a trine to Mars right before Mars goes retrograde. And whenever the sun makes a trine to Mars, it's actually right before it goes uh, retrograde or stations direct. So that's really important. And we end the week with the new moon in Sagittarius, which I think is going to be both overwhelming and exciting at the same time. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we start Monday off with the moon ingressing into Libra, and it's first going to make a conjunction with the south node, and then it's going to make a sextile to Mars in Leo. And then again, we get our first highlight of the week, and that is Mercury stations retrograde. So there's kind of two different uh, feelings going on on Monday. On one end, when the moon is going into Libra, the first thing that you want to really want to pay attention to is the moon is going to be conjoining the south node. There's some sort of a draining aspect to this. Like, that's what the south node does. It takes away... It makes things exhausting and draining. It can bring things up from the past. However, I don't necessarily think that's what this one is about right now. Now, with the moon conjoining the south node, like I said, there's kind of some sort of a burnout. There's some sort of a being a tired, a being tired energy. The moon is in Libra, and it's in the sign of relationships, right? This might be someone in your life. This might be someone that you have to interact with that might just be kind of draining your energy a little bit here. However, as the moon uh, makes a sextile to Mars in Leo, there is someone else that can inspire you and that can give you that motivation that you're looking for. Mars is moving really, really slow at this point. So it's not like we're moving ahead really, really fast. In fact, I titled last week's uh, weekly report as going nowhere fast. And that's because Mercury is slowing down. It's you know now retrograde at this point, but Mars is slowing down too. So again, in order to move ahead, we have to move backwards a little bit. And that's a lot of like what this week is actually about is moving backwards. But I do like the moon making a sextile to Mars and Leo. It's like, okay, there's one aspect that's draining, but there's someone else there to pump you up. But then we actually have Mercury stationing retrograde. And like, look, I'm just going to be real with you guys. I, and this is what my client work has been for like the past month, essentially. If everything is changing in the next few months, the first domino has already fell now that Pluto is in Aquarius. Do you want your life to look the same? Because what's fun about astrology is this all happens no matter what. If everything's going to change, like, do you want to at least have a say in what that is? Or do you just want to, you know, blow, go wherever the wind blows you? And I think this is really important, especially because Jupiter is in Gemini right now. If you haven't watched my Jupiter and Gemini video, you really should, because the whole video I talk about, if Jupiter is about belief and hope and optimism and faith, it's in detriment in Gemini. It's Jupiter's trying to be rational. Jupiter's trying to, again, make sense of the numbers, but that's not how this works. Faith and abundance is opposed to logic. And if you're trying to be logical about abundance, well, you're not going to get it. And this Mercury retrograde phase is about understanding that. Like, I want you to think about where Jupiter is at in your chart. What does Jupiter rule in your chart? And where in your life have you been, like, trying to rationalize a good thing? Like, it just doesn't really work that way. You have to literally, like, be faithful. Think into a bit. Like, again, that's what's really interesting about things like God and religion is that societies throughout history are often much healthier when they do have some sort of a religious practice to them where they believe in some sort of a God versus there's a lot of societies that are typically like atheists that actually don't do all that well. Um, and there's something cohesive about society with that. And what's interesting to me is it's just about believing in something that's unbelievable. It's about understanding that there's more to what we see. And for some reason, everything, like again, in society throughout history, things turn better. I say this because we need that in our lives. And as Mercury goes retrograde, this is an excellent opportunity to understand that we're not thinking as big as we should. We're not playing a bigger, we're not playing the game that we think that we should. Or I should say, we're, we are not playing the game that we could be playing. We could be playing a lot bigger. We could be making things easier. We can just be riding on hope, riding on faith, riding on hopes and dreams. That is possible because I think right now, during this Mercury retrograde phase, it's not going to work by just trying to rationalize everything. That's how you go lower. 
And what I love about this Mercury, uh, and what I love about this Mercury retrograde is Mercury stations. It's about rethinking. It's about replanning. It's about re-strategizing and just throwing out the book and being like, you know what? Fuck it. How can I go bigger? You know what? How can I make this easier? You know what? Why am I playing so small? And that's in any area of your life. Like it doesn't have to be about, you know, work or business or whatever, but like if you're making things complicated because you're trying to rationalize everything, why can't you make it simpler? Because it's just about belief. It's just about that faith. It's not about making sense of things or like, oh, I can believe bigger if I just make make sense of it. It's like something I talked about in, in on, if you're on my uh, memberships, I talked about this on the game plan for the December game plan. I talked about this in the Mercury Retrograde video. If you want to shoot a target, you have to aim above that target in order to hit it. Whether that's skeet shooting, whether that's, again, you know, long distance rifle shooting, whether it's bow and arrow, you have to aim above it just to hit it. If you have a certain goal and it's, let's say it's pretty low because you're playing a small game and you only aim for that, well, guess what? You're going to hit below that. And then you're going to think, well, I can't do anything in my life because everything I try to go towards, I suck. It's like, no, you literally just didn't aim high enough. And so with this Mercury retrograde, why I find this one so funny to me is that like literally the planet of rationality and logic is in detriment in retrograde and the planet of faith and abundance is in detriment and it's retrograde and they're opposite one another. And there's like this beautiful moment where we can just kind of realize that all of these wires are crossed and to uncross them. And this starts on Monday. Like, again, if you're not being delusional on Monday, I really think you're kind of wasting a lot of good energy here. And again, I want you to think about what's next for you in 2025 and in 2026 and in 2027 and in 2028. What's next for you? And again, are is do you want to just go one step or do you want to go 10 steps ahead? Where do you want to be? This is the time to really reorganize your brain in order to think bigger, in order to get where you need to be. So then we get to Tuesday. And on Tuesday, the moon is going to be then making a trine to Jupiter and while the moon's in Libra, making a trine to Jupiter in Gemini. And then it's going to make a square to Venus. Uh, and then we get our second highlight for the week, which is the sun making a trine to Mars. So the first thing I want to br uh, bring about is the moon in Libra, trining Jupiter in Gemini is like inspirational. It is kind of doing a lot though. Like the one thing I keep seeing about Jupiter and Gemini is for whatever reason, we just want to juggle everything. Like we can't just like focus and streamline. Like it's just like, we have to do 10,000 different things. And there's times where that's probably going to be helpful. And there's other times where it's just, it's just not, you know, as the moon is in Libra making a trine to Jupiter, we want to take on more. We want to take on all this information, but as the moon that makes a square to Venus, it's like you, you have two options, either work with speed or work with quality. It's like quantity and quality right here, which again, the goal in life is to have both, which again, if you want quality and quantity, you have to do quantity first. Like you have to be able to do things a lot and at a very fast space in order to do the quality aspect as you do it, you become more efficient. But you'll never, if you focus more and more on quality, you'll probably not be as fast. And I just feel like that, that moment comes up for us on Tuesday where we wanna take on a lot, but it may not look as good, it may not be, as exa like exactly the way that we want it. And I think that's okay. The one thing I will say is the sun is in Sagittarius and it's trining Mars and Leo. There is some sort of tapping into confidence here and realization of like what our vision is. What I like about Mars, it retro, like I feel like the closer and closer we get to Mars retrograde Leo, the more and more I'm looking forward to it. Um, I said this in the in the game plan video. If you're not familiar with what the game plan is, it's like every month I go over the the transits ahead. But rather than being like, oh, Mars is going to go retrograde, this is what this means. It's like I try to tee you guys up so you guys can actually stop wasting your life. Like so many of you guys look at the astrology and just go, oh, how can I let this victimize me today? And it's such a way, like, I fucking hate that about people that are into astrology. Like, that's that's not what I'm here for. I didn't sign up for that. I'm trying to actually help you guys and use this, like, shit to actually plan on our lives. So I look at Mars retrograde and Leo. It's like, this is a humiliation, uh, humiliation ritual. And not like the Illuminati, you know, like, the celebrities need that. But more of, like, if you think everything's going to go your way. If you think you're going to be the expert the first, or the, it's going to be the best the first time you do it, you're wrong. You need to look foolish. You need to be embarrassed. You need to take that bruise in order to keep going. That's what this whole Mars retrograde is. And the sun in Sagittarius, trining Mars in Leo, is kind of being goofy and being excited and just putting yourself out there. That's what a lot of this is. There's this realization of this energy. There's this strong willpower to just go out. Now, here's the thing. When Mars goes retrograde... It's going to start hurting us a little bit, but we need that. That's what we need. If we didn't need what's going on in the transiting astrology, we wouldn't be going through it. That's the whole thing. So as we get into Tuesday and that sun shines Mars, I want you to feel that confidence. I want you to feel that energy. Sure, it might be more of like intense willpower and it may not really translate much into moving forward, but that's okay. You just need to feel the confident energy that's going on on Tuesday. But that brings us to Wednesday. And on Wednesday, the moon, while it's in Libra, still is going to make a sextile to Mercury in uh, Sagittarius now that Mercury's retrograde. 
Uh, there's a part of this that I like. The one part of this that I like is that like, <laughs> number one, someone is telling you a Mercury retrograde thing. Like when the moon's in Libra, relationships are a little bit more heightened and it's sextiling Mercury retrograde in Sag where there's like, someone is going to deliver the Mercury retrograde news to you in some way, I feel like on uh, on Wednesday. There's another part of it that is kind of going a little bit fast. Like, you know, the moon's connected to Mercury retrograde, our thoughts and our ideas are gonna be everywhere. But that then translates to the moon is going to ingress into Scorpio and make a square to Pluto on Wednesday. This is, again, is this going to be roses and daisies and, and feeling amazing and great? No, um, it's the moon going into its sign of fall and the moon is about emotions and in Scorpio, it's like, ugh, like it's reactionary pain, if that makes sense. And it squares Pluto and Aquarius. I the the analogy I can use for this is I am this transit whenever I go online and I see people's opinions like after you know the election and everyone just acting as if everyone's gonna die because whatever it's just like I I, I get annoyed and I get frustrated I'm like oh I hate people that's kind of the energy of what Wednesday is there is this emotional reaction to it and there is this kind of like resistance to fear power, corruption. When I say resistance to, it's like susceptibility to. The moon in Scorpio squaring Pluto is like, okay, I don't feel good. Now, am I going to cower in, in you know, because again, Pluto's in Aquarius. There's a lot to talk about there. And I've done videos on this in the past, but the big thing is if it's power, if it's fear, if it's in Aquarius, it's in society, it's in, the, in, in, you know, groups of people. As we become more and more online, as more and more voices come up and become louder, and again, rather than hearing your typical, you know, what our hunter-gatherer brains are used to hearing as 100 to 200 people's opinions, now we're hearing 8 billion people's opinions, it becomes overwhelming. This moon in Scorpio squaring Pluto and Aquarius, where, wherever this is at in your chart, is about kind of like confronting these new fears, confronting this new territory, this new frontier, and understanding that there is a scary part to it, understanding that there is going to be, like, not every day is going to be a win, not every day is going to be successful, but that you're going to muster through it anyway. And over this two and a half day period, while the moon's in Scorpio, we're going to be a little bit pissy. We're going to be a little bit emo. We're going to be a little bit emotional. But you need to channel that energy in a positive direction rather than sulking in it, rather than crying about it. Okay, maybe some of you need to actually cry it out and like let it out. But like rather than sulking in it, you need to figure out a way to put this energy into a positive area. That could literally be something like music. That could literally be something like working out. Whatever it is for you, you need to put this, ah, just this gross energy somewhere. And why I like this moon in Scorpio transit is we're getting ready for the new moon in Sagittarius. And you're talking to a Sagittarius rising right now. Scorpio rules the 12th house of Sagittarius. And I always like making the joke that like Sagittarius are, are way more emo than any other sign because Scorpio rules our 12th house. The 12th house is about the subconscious, fears, phobias, self-sabotage. It rules prisons. And Scorpio rules our 12th house. The Sag Rising Simulate. It's fucking dark back there. It's very dark. It's very damp. It's very wet. It is a third world prison, essentially, in the back of our minds, the way our subconscious thinks. And why I like this moon in Scorpio is that this is getting into the dark moon before the new moon. Like, think about this for a minute. How bad does it have to get? How bad do you want it? I was thinking earlier today, I've been going on these walks in the morning. And I've been listening to these motivational tapes. And for whatever reason, this like this image came to my head, the story of just kind of like, cause it was like, how bad do you want it? And I was thinking like, if I, I want what I want so bad that if what I wanted was a meal and I was in prison and I hadn't ate in two to three weeks and there was someone else there who also hadn't eaten two to three weeks and wanted that meal just as bad as I do, I would do everything to kill them to make sure I got that meal. That's how bad I want the things that I want. It's not a, oh, I want it, but, oh, I want it, but, you know, if life gets in the way, life gets in the way. With the moon in Scorpio, I want you to feel, like, I was just thinking, like, just, it's sometimes the most, motiv like, motivation isn't just inspiration. Like, for me, motivation is, like, pain. The worse I feel, the moments where I feel like I could have done better, the moments where I feel like I look back, I'm like, why didn't I give that my all? Why didn't, why am I not doing the things that I want? And I get upset about it. Like, that's the motivational part for me. And I feel like with this moon in Scorpio before the new moon in Sag, before we actually lock in on our target, lock in on our vision and go where we need to go, we actually have to feel like shit to motivate ourselves. Because again, when we're comfy, when we're comfortable, when we're relaxed, we're like, oh, well, anything can happen. We're not too worried about it. But again, I'm not here to just be like, okay, here's the astrology. Mercury's retrograde. Oh, your phone broke. You're a victim. You know, life sucks. Like, that's not what I'm here for. There's 10,000 other astrologers for that. I'm here to help you guys Get clear about what, what you're fucking on this earth to do, what path you're trying to take, and I'm just trying to give you guidance as to how the energy is going to work. And if astrology is a time-honoring exercise, honor the time. 
Everything's changing. Do you want to just go where the wind pushes you or do you want to actually have a little bit of control with it? And as much as other people will tell you that you're not in control of your life and that it's all fated, I believe in both fate and, and free will. I believe that we have a say-so in what our control is because I've seen this with astrology. The astrology happens no matter what. Guess what? Everything's going to change in your reality, whether you like it or not. Second thing, though, is, well, if you knew that it was all going to change, could you place dominoes where you want them to fall? That's the difference here. So anyway, I say that so, so just to say, I'm really looking forward to this moon in Scorpio. I think it's a great time to have some alone time and to get quiet and to fill things through and be like, you know what? This fucking sucks. I don't like where I'm at because most of you don't like want things better in your life, whether that's relationships, whether that's money, whether that's where you're living, whether it's with your parents, whatever it is. We want typically things to be better. That's what we're designed to do as humans. You need to sit and be quiet and understand, I don't really like this. Where do I need to go? Like this next two weeks is when 2025 starts. And 2025 starts doesn't start with like a, you know, a, a racing gun going off and we're off to the races. This it's 2025 starts by getting inside, going through some, you know, major changes on the inside to then have a huge propellant forward by spring. And again, that's what I'm here to do is to coach you guys on how to do this. So anyway, moon goes into Scorpio. It's time to get deep. Let's move to Thursday. Then we get to Thursday and the moon is going to be in Scorpio and it's going to square Mars, but then it's going to try and Saturn. Look, you're going to lose some confidence on this. The moon in Scorpio trying Mars and Leo is just like, it's rage, right? The moon is in Mars' sign. Mars is in Leo. We want the glory. We want to be recognized. We want to be resilient, but it is slowing down and there's some sort of conflict of interest here. Like the moon in Scorpio is like, you know, um, like let's say Mars is in Leo and you want, let's say you want, you know, more attention on you, but you never get it. But it's like the one time you're in a bad mood, you get the attention. You're like, oh, great. Like that's kind of the energy here. But then the moon is going to be in Scorpio and it's going to make a trine to Saturn and Pisces. I have a lot to say about Saturn and Pisces over this Mercury retrograde period, because in my opinion, it's kind of like there's something to really pay attention to with Saturn and Pisces. With the moon in Scorpio trining Saturn, you got to know the pain and do it anyway. Like Saturn is about discipline and restrictions. It is about boundaries. And Pisces, again, like our faith, like it, it, here's the thing with everything in Sagittarius, it's easy to dream big, but Pisces is like, okay, do we actually believe that on the inside? Do we, can we actually accept that we want those things on the inside? Can we actually bring that hope as a feeling to us on the inside? But Saturn, if Saturn's about blocks and Saturn's about limitations, we got to understand, okay, well, where are the walls around that? And the moon and Scorpio trining that Saturn and Pisces, in my opinion, is like, we got to tap a little bit more into that. Okay, where, where should we put boundaries on feelings, right? Should we, you know, be angry, but still feel like we can go where we want to go? Like I just had this conversation with a, a client yesterday and I, this has been coming up a lot in my work is like, you don't have to feel like you're worthy of whatever you want in order to get it. Like you can literally feel like you're not worthy of anything and still get the thing that you want. Like you don't have to feel, you don't have to feel worthy in order to have the things that you want. It's that it's really that simple. And I look at this as on Thursday as like a really excellent time to like make that mental connection. You might get frustrated. You might get mad. It may not seem that's going to go the way, but you can still move forward and get it anyway. And then we get to Friday. I like Thursday. Thursday kind of sucks, but it's what makes Friday good. The moon is going to be in Scorpio. It's going to sextile Venus in Capricorn. I'm laughing because of what I wrote about this. The moon's going to sextile Venus in Capricorn. It's then going to go opposite Uranus. And then the moon's going to try Neptune. The, the, the note I wrote about this is like revenge body. Like, um, there's like a, it's like a thing online. It's like, you know, girl breaks up with, or gets, uh, gets in a relationship, gets out of a relationship. And then all of a sudden they're, you know, they're getting it. They're working out. They're getting their life together. Like there's something about the moon in Scorpio, sex telling Mars, uh, or Venus and Capricorn. Again, it reminds me of the American psycho Patrick Bateman, like narcissistic level of focusing on their looks, their aesthetic, their lifestyle. That's the vibe here. Now the moon sex tells Venus where it's like, again, revenge body. Like I don't feel good, but I want to do these very stoic, hard things in order to look good about it. And then the moon, while it's in Scorpio, goes opposite Uranus and Taurus. Kind of a snapping moment, but in a good way. There is some instability here. Like I would argue on Friday, if you're feeling that sulking low feeling and you're not directing that into energy and you're just sitting in it, the moon opposite Uranus is probably gonna fuck you up a little bit. It might be like the thing that like really makes you upset. It's kind of like when you're having a bad day and you're late for something and then, you know, there's like a 90 year old woman who's going 10, 15 miles an hour under the speed limit in front of you and you just kind of like, like something like a, a blood vessel pops in your brain. That's what's going on. Now, if you are channeling into good energy, there's this like, I feel like excitement. Like, you know, you kind of like, have you ever been, have you ever just had something that like kind of finally hit you? Like something just finally hits you and it's the thing that makes the biggest difference in your life with the change. That's the moon opposite Uranus this this time at least around on Friday. But then the moon, then the moon will make a trine to Neptune. This is all about idealization. 
Now, again, I've talked a lot of shit on Neptune, but Neptune can be really helpful. What it's not helpful about is like, again, acting as if whenever like there's a negative mo uh, Neptune transit that that's whatever you're seeing is what you're seeing. But when you have the moon in Scorpio trining Neptune in Pisces, what this is really good for is visualization. I've always been a proponent of visualization. I've talked a lot about it with Neptune stuff. And that moon in Scorpio trining Neptune in Pisces, be angry, be upset and visualize. And again, this is the dark moon phase before the new moon in Sagittarius. Get clear about what it is that you want, what you want, what you want your life to look like, what you want your relationships to look like, what you, whatever you want, whatever you want your life to look like, this is the time to think about it. And think about it not in like a, oh, that would be really nice, but like, why do you want it? Do you actually want it? Are you actually hungry for it? And ask yourself that, because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I could, but then if you just get down, there's, there's usually something going on deep inside, and you just gotta tap into that. Then we get to Saturday, the moon's gonna ingress into Sagittarius. It will first make a trine to Mars and Leo, and that's when we get the new moon later on that night on Saturday. I think Saturday is really fun to go out. Like, I, I don't know why I always like, I'm always like, this is a good time to go out. There's just like, I, after working on the strip and just like working in Vegas, there's just like, I've every time the moon's in Sag, it's always like, it doesn't matter if it's like a Tuesday, like there's just gonna be a party going on somewhere. But with the moon going into Sag, trining Mars and the new moon Sag, I want you to dream big. I want you to aim above your target. I want you to, um, I want you to believe and not think. I don't want you to be like, let's think about it. And, you know, let's, because again, the second you think about it, the second, again, think of Mercury too. Mercury's like the closest to the sun. It's like you versus Jupiter's like super far away. Like we, no, we want to be up here. We don't want to, we don't want to be in our minds and thinking about this. I just want you to believe. I believe I said this on, I just record too many videos and I talk to too many people. I don't always remember where I say things, but uh, I, I think I said this on my game plan video uh, in motocross. There's two, there's two people on the track. There's like, you know, whatever guys in their twenties and their thirties. And they're, they're going fast they're on the big bikes, right? The big bikes go fast, you know, 250s, 450s, they're, they're hitting the jumps. And then there's like seven-year-old kids on like 65s, 85s, and they're lapping grown-ass men. And they are flying through the air, fifth gear pinned the whole time. It's, it's just insane to watch. And these kids don't have this fear of crashing and breaking bone because they haven't maybe experienced that yet. All they know is rip that throttle. And because, and again, now they're grown adults, they've typically have crashed. They've hurt themselves. They're like, oh, I don't really want to do that. They're a little bit slower, a little bit bigger. And they think about it a little bit more. But those kids, they don't think about it. They're just like, I just want to jump. I just want to be like, you know, the the guys I look up to and, and go really fast and be a racer. And they just rip that throttle. It's genuinely crazy to watch. And anyone who's ever been involved in motocross knows exactly what I'm talking about. You can have the fastest guy that's 25 years old on a big bike and he will get lapped by a eight-year-old kid. That's the way I want you to look at this is it's not about, oh, let me hit this jump and let me think about it. You just need to believe and you need to have that faith and don't think about it. Turn your silly little brain off because it's not helping you here. On Saturday, I want you to dream big and then whatever your big dream is, I want you to double it. I want you to think even bigger than that because once you have that target, then you can actually hit that target that you wanna hit. Then we get to Sunday and on Sunday, the moon is gonna make a square to Saturn while it's in Sagittarius, then the moon goes opposite Jupiter and will conjoin Mercury. So there's kind of a little bit to talk about here. As the moon is in Sag, it's going to make a square to Saturn. Uh, a little bit of a slow start, but the thing I keep coming back to with all the transits we get to Saturn right now is, hey, like when you challenge yourself to think bigger, right? Like that really does unlock a very weird insecurity on the inside. Like, oh, I don't think I can do that. Or, oh, wow, that's that's actually scary. In my client work, you know what I've been asking people is, what is the scariest thing you can do right now? And every single time I ask that, there's a big smile on their face. Why? I just ask, what are you scared of? And you know, and by the way, when I ask, what are you scared, what is the scariest thing you can do right now? They're not like being like, oh, lay in a bathtub of tarantulas, like something genuinely terrifying. They're always like, um, you know, quit my job or, you know, travel the world or like something like genuinely really good. And that's super scary to them. They have this big smile to it. And it's always funny because you could see the, the the connection they're making of like, oh, that's really scary, but it's actually something I want. And I feel like that's like that Sagittarius like vibe to it. But the scary part of it is like Saturn and Pisces, like you have to kind of like challenge that inner belief that you can have that, that you can do that. And again, we're in Sagittarius season right now. We're in Jupiter season. It's all about believing, not about being logical and rational. That's for Gemini and Virgo season. We're not here right. We're not here for that right now. So then the moon will go opposite Jupiter and then it's going to conjoin Mercury. A lot of this is seeing the big picture. And you got to know that there's going to be issues, and especially right now. Like, it's not about saying, oh, I'm just going to look at this big picture and I'm just going to trust. I'm just going to have faith and everything's going to work out. No, you need to do that. And there's going to be issues. There's going to be problems. It's not going to work out the way that you think. 
but you still need to believe it and do it anyway. That's what Sunday's about. So Sunday, I think you're going to experience some interesting resistance that's more so of a notice. It's, a no, it's something that you should take notice of and go, hmm, let me examine that a little bit deeper. That's this week. Next week is gonna be a priority weekly astrology report. We have Venus trining Uranus. We have Mercury going opposite Jupiter. We have the sun making a square to Saturn. We have the Mercury retrograde Kazemi. We have Mercury retrograde making a square to Saturn. Again, Venus enters Aquarius. Venus will conjoin Pluto. And we have Mars stationing retrograde next week. Next week is a very big deal. We have a lot to talk about. And in my opinion, 2025 starts next week. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel to get an update for that. And I'll be seeing you guys next week.